So welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Steve Kiyama, and I'm the owner of Action Coach Western Fairfax. And today we're going to speak with Heather Lover about her business, her journey through business ownership, challenges, best practices, and maybe share a peek into what it's really like to own and operate a growing business. So if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations like this. So Heather, thank you and welcome for welcome to this event here today. Thank you for being here. Please give us a brief over, overview of your background and tell us a little bit about your business. Sure. Thanks so much for having me, Stephen. Uh, again, my name is Heather Lover. I'm the founder and CEO of CMO.ai, where we automate early stage branding, marketing, and pitching to help startups get from founded to funded faster. My background is very unusual. <laughs> um, I finished high school at the age of 12 and started my first startup when I was only 13, ran that for about five years tutored over 400 kids and a few adults in English and creative writing. And over and over throughout my life, I've seen how the combination of good design and compelling narratives presented by a confident speaker can really make the improbable possible. And that's really what led to the creation of SEMO to unlock those three things for founders everywhere. Fantastic, fantastic. Let's give the audience a little bit of, a, of, a, of an introduction to the, the scope of your business. Who do you serve and what problems do you help them with? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, we like to serve anyone who's looking to start a business, whether that's a venture scalable startup, a small business, content creators, anything that needs a logo, a brand, a presentation deck of some sort, social media templates, letterhead, et cetera. The and main... The no. main pain point we solve is that right now, trying to create a brand is expensive. It's often done in ways that even some marketing experts don't understand sets business owners up for major risk, liability, and expense later. And then it's often up to the founder to navigate the many different silos of marketing, jumping from gig designers mm -hmm. to Canva yes. to pitch experts and back again, yeah. Like, yeah, you can DIY it, but you're going to fall through those gaps, lose a bunch of time, lose a bunch of money, and end up with a brand and marketing that's not very consistent or compelling along the way. So at SEMO, we're trying to bridge those gaps so that you're set up for success and you can focus on what you do best as a founder and not worry about what color goes where, what font goes where, is that compliant, is it not? Yeah, all of that gets solved for you. Yeah, and those are major details too. What would make your business unique and why do your customers choose you specifically? Yeah, the main thing that makes us unique, I like to think of it as at least a three-pronged approach. The first thing that makes us unique is our brand quiz that generates the user's brand. Mm -hmm. Right now, most of our competitors, if it's a, like a logo generator or something like that, it's based purely on founder preference and hollow aesthetics. Mm -hmm. There's no emphasis on strategy, no emphasis on your competitors. We've partnered with Crunchbase and we're still working on this. It's not totally done yet, but we've developed an algorithm that will trawl investment data, what's happening in your specific industry and what brand trends are helping founders succeed so we can infuse that into your brand. We take that and combine it with how you want to be perceived by your customers. So it helps founders step outside of their own preference and think about how they want to be perceived and what that relationship is like with their customers. Mm -hmm. So you choose three keywords to define that perception, and that generates a brand based on psychology, sociology, color theory, to help you evoke what it is you want to evoke with your customers. So that's differentiator number one. Number two is that it's seamless application of that brand after it's created. It takes one click pretty much, and then we apply that brand to pitch decks, letterhead, one page or social media. So again, if you take Canva for instance, yeah, they have a great library of templates, but it's up to the founder to put a designer hat on whether they have that expertise or not. And guess what color and font goes where. We take care of that for you. 
third main differentiator is our focus on WCAG and ADA compliance. Where not many founders know this, but online marketing and websites are now regulated by the government. And you have to meet certain standards of color contrast, font size, et cetera, to make sure that your marketing is accessible to people with disabilities. Our system has taken that into consideration. And you can trust that every brand, every marketing material that we generate by SEMO will be fully compliant. What is one thing you wish more people knew about your business? Oh, gosh, that it's there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <maybe>. but. <laughs> Probably a really simple answer, but we're really new. So we're still trying to build that brand awareness. So, yeah, if I would love for more people who are interested in building their companies to just discover SEMO, find out that we're there and we're affordable and we're on your side to help you brand and launch your company. Well, strangely enough, that leads me to marketing, which is something <laughs> vital to, gee, I think just about every business. Yep. <laughs> and it's one that almost every business struggles with. What's the number one marketing strategy that's been working for you so far? The main thing that's been working for us is that at being in marketing, I know that it takes quite a while to build that brand awareness and to get those organic sales going. So we focus just as much for now on working with partners, working with people in my network, finding universities, accelerator programs who are interested in joining our beta program mm -hmm. so that we can start to work with customers, work mm -hmm. with founders, mm -hmm. get enough people into the beta that the platform's getting used, we're learning from the users, we're generating revenue how we test and refine those organic funnels. Mm -hmm. And I know that's going to be a process over the next year or so to get that right and really rev up that organic sales engine. Good, 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 good. So we've spent a bunch of time focused on the business. Let's share a little bit about you. <laughs> Why did you choose to go into business for yourself as opposed to working for somebody else? And what was that transition like? In my case, that started really early. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> um, not many people can hire 13 year olds. So. Yes. <laughs> Except maybe their parents. <laughs> exactly. And my dad worked in the Air Force. It's not mm. like the military could hire me. Mm, <laughs> so, true. <yes. laughs> So in my case, it was very much a case of I wanted to work. I wanted to start something. Um, I was very bored because I, I was supposed to head to college at 13. Mm -hmm. um, I was headed to the University of Arizona at that age. But I've had chronic health issues my entire life, and that kept me from going. And so I was sitting at home. I was bored, and I wanted to do something. So mm -hmm. I was studying college-level material at home on my own. But I wanted to build a company, so I, I dove into it. Mm -hmm. I I started my first company thinking it would be a summer project, but it blew up. It kept growing, kept going, mm -hmm. ran it for five years. And once you get a taste of what it's like to have an idea, work really hard to bring it to fruition, mm -hmm. and then see it affect other people's lives, mm -hmm. it's really hard for another job to measure up after that. It's just, it's not the same thing. You're not so, saying it's addictive, are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> um, so after I ran that site, I thought, oh, I'll take a break and I'll go be normal for a while and I'll go work for another company. And every single time, it just it wasn't the same. And so mm. I kept finding myself pulled back mm. Mm. over to doing my own thing. Cool. So where do you see this business in the next three to five years? I... There, there's a two-pronged answer to that. On straight business hat, I want to see it sold. I want to build to an acquisition Good. Within, mm -hmm. <laughs> within three to seven years or so. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a whole path to that, mm. a plan that we're working toward. We know who we want to acquire us, so mm. making progress on that. But mm -hmm. putting on mission hat for a moment, Personally, I can't wait to see the knock-on effect of the businesses that we'll be able to help grow. Mm, good. And the 
people that might otherwise not have had an equal shot at venture capital okay or who are absolutely brilliant in their field have become experts in order to build those innovations but because they're experts in their field they're not also experts in marketing and that's such a common impediment to startup success mm -hmm. i can't i can't wait to see how many startups exist mm -hmm. and get to that point of being funded because of our impact awesome 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 i'm thinking about the future in a business kind of like you just talked about scaling it up and building it to that point where it is sellable for a, an attractive amount of money it's kind of important to start talking about a team so how would you describe your leadership style in business do you think it's changed over the years as you've done this uh it's definitely changed as i've a grown up mm. and be <laughs> gotten more familiar with my strengths and weaknesses mm. and identifying how to find a co-founder who complements that mm -hmm. and then a management style that facilitates that mm. and then supports team members in their own strengths and weaknesses oh cool good 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 what would you say has been your approach to hiring and retaining team members, especially in today's environment? The main thing I think is first and foremost, they have to buy into whatever the underlying goal is. Good. They have to completely believe in the underlying vision, mm -hmm. the mission behind it, mm -hmm. and they have to see a clear path to success. Mm. And you need to be honest with them about that. Because it can't always be sunshines and lollipops and we're all gonna buy Tahiti. There's gotta be <laughs> there's gotta be I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we joke about that all the time in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but there's gotta be recognition that that road's gonna be long and hard. That yes, we all believe in whatever that ultimate projection is, but we know it's it's gonna take grit to get there. Yeah, the journey has some puddles and rocks along the way, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I think as long as you are honest about that, mm -hmm. share the vision, and then work really hard to support your team members when they go through puddles, mm -hmm. they're more likely to return the favor mm -hmm. and continue to support the company when the company faces its puddles. Good, 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 good. I like that. All right. So we've covered a lot of ground. <laughs> uh, for those who are watching, I Highly encourage you to save this, come back a few times, because there's some really interesting nuggets that we're digging up here and uh, playing around with. So as we wrap up, i got a few uh, sort of rapid fire questions. So just kind of answers from the top of your head. And you've done this a little bit, so this you, you've had a little <laughs> practice, I'm sure. What's a key for success for you? A key for success for me is determination and creative outside the box thinking. Great, great, great. So let's pretend you met somebody this afternoon who's just getting ready to start up your business. What's your one piece of advice you would give that person? Follow the logic train through to the station. That's very that was good. A guiding philosophy of my childhood that mm -hmm. we get very used to thinking maybe one, two, three steps ahead. Go all the way to the end of the station, follow that logic train through to its natural conclusion and plan accordingly. Start with the end in mind. And you know, work talk about a, from there. Yeah. Talk about a cliche and it works every time. <laughs> yep. Yep. What's one book you're reading right now or have read recently that's had that's had some impact? Oh, um, I've read this a million times over. Um, The Power Presenter mm. by Jerry Weisburn, Weissman. Oh, sorry. Um he was the former producer of 60 Minutes mm -hmm. and is an excellent, excellent presentation coach. And uh, you can learn so much from him about how to pitch market and sell your company. Fantastic. If you had to choose only one area of your business that you could immediately improve tomorrow, what would it be? This is kind of be kind of funny from a marketing company, but marketing. <laughs> <laughs> that's mainly because that's our main focus right now. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah, 
<laughs> cool, cool, cool. And what's most inspiring to you today? All of the founders we get to work with. Mm. Cool, cool, cool. All right, last question. How can others learn more about you, your company, and how can they get in touch with you? They can head to semo.ai or find me on LinkedIn. I'm Heather Lover. Um, and you can always reach me at hello at semo.ai. Fantastic, fantastic. Heather, this has been fantastic. And thank you very much for joining us and sharing all your wonderful insights. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun.